Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a review of a game called Gizmos. This one is from Simon, and it is one of their Gen Con releases. We were lucky enough to get our hands on it earlier. This is a two to four player engine building game through and through. You are definitely building sort of engines or gizmos rather in this game. Yeah, so the idea behind the game is everyone is an inventor. And if, as an inventor, you have a laboratory in front of you and you're building all these uh, different gizmos into your laboratory. The trick is, as the game progresses, a lot of these cards are going to be triggering other things. You're going to have all these massive combinations to be able to do multiple things with one simple action in the game. Yeah, if you like combos, this game has plenty of them, and, for sure. And this game is from Phil Walker Harding, the, uh, the same person who uh, created Baron Park, which yeah. was a fantastic game last year. And this kind of falls in line with their other style of those type, type of games, like uh, Potion Explosion, Yeah, this is, is huge for them, and, and it, Dragon Castle. It's definitely going to bring back memories of Potion Explosion. It doesn't play anything like that, but all. of course it has this nice centerpiece yeah. with the uh, marbles that come out. All right, so let's talk about all these different components. In the center, you're going to notice three different stacks of level one, level two, and level three gizmos. These are going to be splayed out in front of the uh, players. You're going to have four in level one, three in level two, and two in level two. These are gizmos you're going to be try trying to build into your laboratory to key off different types of things within the game. Everyone's going to have a laboratory in front of them. You're going to have your four different actions or possible actions that you can take. Plus, you're also going to have a space for your upgrades and any of the converter cards that you collect as well. Yeah, and you're also going to have one of these energy storage rings. You're going to lay this right next to your laboratory. This is a little thicker because you're going to be storing these energy marbles in the ring. You also have a number of victory point tokens, and of course you have all of the different colored marbles within the game. There are four different colored marbles, and they are going to key off the different cards because all of these cards are color coordinated with the marbles themselves. Exactly. The game is very simple to play. Like we said earlier, there's going to be a lot of combos that fire off, so there's some tracking that gets thicker and thicker as you play. But simply on your turn, you're going to take one of these four actions, and we'll describe them right now. I'll start with the file action. When you file, everyone's going to start with that one file card in their laboratory. When you file, the base action is to simply take one of the cards face up from the main board and bring that over into your archives. The archives is just going to be a space that you have set aside next to your laboratory somewhere, wherever you have space on the table. When you do that, though, like with any action, you're going to fire off every little resulting action that you might have in your file cards. Right now we have one. This says that I'm also allowed to randomly take a marble out of this converter and put it in my energy ring. You can't look in the top of this. You're going to have to take it randomly. It's unlike taking it from the energy row. Which is the second possible action, which is called pick. When you pick, you're going to look at one of the six visible marbles here, and you're simply going to take that again and put it into your energy storage. Now, there's a lot of different chain reactions, once again, as you collect more of these cards that give you the opportunity at, to have pick bonuses. Yeah, exactly. For instance, Jeremy just took a red marble. He might have a card that says, every time you pick a red marble, do something else. And that yeah. can be a wide range of things. It could be taking more marbles, marbles out of the converter, all sorts of things. And those can trigger other things, so you can explode significant chain reactions. The next thing is building a card. Now, when you build a card, like I said, you're going to take a card earlier and put it in your archive. When you build, you're going to build the card from your archive or any of the cards that are face up out on the board. Before we talk about building the card, we should probably break down the card a little bit. Up in the left-hand corner is the card type. This is where it's going to be ultimately built in your laboratory. Then across the top, you're going to see basically all of the effects. And again, there's a wide range of effects in this game. Upper right-hand corner. <laughs> is the victory points. Some of these score victory points, some of them won't. As you graduate up into the level three cards, they're going to be bigger and bigger victory points. And then finally, down here in the lower left-hand corner, you're going to see the cost. And this is when you build it. So when I build this one right here, it's going to cost one red energy. So if I built it either from my archive or out on the board, I'm going to simply put it where it goes, take my red energy, and put it back in the converter. The last thing you could possibly do is research, and that's when you get to look through the face down stacks, and you're going to pick three cards. You're going to pick one of those cards to do one of two things with. One, you can build that card immediately if you have the resources or the marbles in order to build it. The second thing you can do is throw it into your arch archives as long as you have room. Now, I said it's three cards you can look through. However, if you look at your upgrades, everyone starts with the same number of upgrades, and that, when you look at it, it says five, one, and three. That's broken down into this. Five means how many marbles you can store in your storage unit at any given time. Any given time. 
The one means how many things you can have in your archive. And the three means how many cards you can look through when you do the research. And of course, those are gonna be increased as you get some of those upgrade cards or gizmos into your laboratory. Exactly, and the research is significantly amplified by, the, by this because if you're able to take four, maybe even five cards off the top of one of these decks, you're very likely going to find a card that you can build immediately, or at least one that you're very close to build. The trick behind this entire game, so we'll go ahead and get into the review portion, because that's basically the game. You're yeah. gonna play, as we said, until one player has built 16 gizmos, or they've placed, or they've built four of the level threes. The trick in this game is all about the chain reactions. Being able to take one action, like a pick for instance, and taking a particular color marble, and then be able to do multiple different gizmos. Each of your gizmos that you have can only be used once per turn. However, if you have multiple different gizmos, they can key off each other. So one simple marble from a pick could actually end up being four or five or six marbles with that singular pick if you have the right type of gizmos. But remember, you're gonna have to have the right type of upgrades to store all those here as well. Exactly, there's a lot of huge combos that can fire off, and one of the areas that we didn't even talk about yet are the converters. Yeah. That's one of the spaces that you're gonna use quite a bit if you build there. The converter cards are going to allow you to do things, for instance, to treat one black marble as two black marbles. Yeah. And like Jeremy said, you can only use these cards once per turn. So if you had three black marbles and you had that card, it doesn't mean you have six black marbles. You can make one of them into two, and then you have two more making your, your total four. And that's the joy of the game, trying to figure out those combinations to best maximize the amount of points you're scoring or the amount of marbles you're collecting. Because in the end, it's all about trying to collect the best gizmos, because every single one of these gizmos, minus the starting one you have, is gonna collect you victory points at the end. Right, and some of the cards even have victory point engines on them. Some of the abilities, for instance, this one here says, whenever I build a red card, I get a victory point. So there are going to be cards that come out that kind of direct players down certain paths to score their points. Otherwise, you're go like Jeremy said, you're going to score the points on the gizmo cards themselves. So as a review, there's two negative things that I have to say about the game. Number one, as the game lengthens, and it's really a short game, it's about 45 minutes to yeah. play. But as the game progresses and you start to have people with you know the 10 through the 16 cards that you need, Turns can last a little while, uh, just simply for the fact that you're keying like four, five, six gizmos at a time. So there's a little bit of downtime there. The other, and it's not really a negative at all, but the first time or even the second time you play this, you have to let everyone at the table know how important picking is. Those pick cards are extremely important because they allow you to collect a huge number of marbles in one turn. So understand this on your turn if you don't have any pick and you simply take the pick action you're taking one marble i mean it's going to take you multiple rounds to be able to buy some of these gizmos if someone has a couple pick ones and they take one marble it could key three four five marbles so in the next turn they can simply build something and it's going to progress their game much faster than yours so you have to make everyone aware that picking is hugely important in this game yeah you can set up a great pick engine like jeremy said it takes you it's going to take you basically two turns to grab marbles build grab marbles build mm -hmm. for the most part now that might not get you the most high value cards. Sure. It might get you to the end of the game because you might be able to get 16 cards. I might have fewer, but I might have built some different engine. But it is important to point out that you have to pay attention to these different abilities and know the power of some of them, particularly the pick, or the ones that amplify picking. Because there's even some cards that when you build a certain card, you're allowed to pick a couple marbles. Yeah. Anything that gets you marbles, generally a good thing in the game. Having said those two things, I don't think there's anything more satisfying than being able to do an action and then keying it and saying, oh, I did this here because of this, and this happened because of this, and you keep taking those chain reactions. In any game that you have, that's incredibly satisfying yeah. for the player taking the action, maybe not for the other players at the table, but definitely for that player who built that engine. And that's the, one of the key draws to Gizmos for me. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, I would say, and again, not a negative, but one thing you got to look out for is you've got to pay attention to what you've got going on because it can get a little complicated for newer players to make sure they fire off all the things they're allowed to fire off. Right. Because there's the first time you play with a new group, you're going to find, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to do this on my turn. And, you know, you got to let that slide and let people do that. But it does take some uh, tracking to figure out what all you can fire off and what you can't. Great addition to the Potion yeah. Explosion line, the Dragon Castle line. Great for families, great for new gamers, uh, and even novice or, uh, enthusiast gamers who love the style of, of engine building type of game. Yeah, and, and just like Potion Explosion, great table presence oh, with absolutely. this piece. And the, all the graphics and the artwork on the cards is really well done. Gizmos from Phil Walker-Harding. 
two to four players, plays in about 45 minutes. If you guys have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Make sure you grab a copy of Gen Con if yeah. you are there. And we will catch you guys later. Bye-bye.